This is episode 114 of Hebrews in Exile, and in the absence of our honorable teacher, Robert B. Holman Jr., I am joined by none other than Yeshai Beverly. We know him as just simply Trey. Trey is joining us to talk about an issue of the Most High descending out of the Mahashamayim and embodying a man and calling himself Jesus Christ, which is a total contradiction of what our text talks about, the Masoretic text, where it says that the Most High is not a man, that he should lie or change his mind. So why in the world are we acquiescing to this idea of the Most High actually being a man? And actually, that would constitute, if he's Jesus the Christ, being a demigod, which is, again, something that is not germane to the Masoretic text. We're going to talk about that in some detail in this podcast, Hebrews in Exile. You know what we do. Let's go! This is Sean Appleton, and in the absence of our honorable teacher, Robert B. Holman Jr., I have sitting in with me special guest, Trey Beverly, and this is Hebrews, Hebrews in, in exile. exile. See, you right on top of it. <laughs> you ain't yeah. missing the beat. Yeah. We on top of it. I mean. This is a special edition of Hebrews in Exile. Um, our honorable teacher is getting some much needed rest, as he should, um, down in Southern California. And I should have text messaged him. And I should have told him, I said, you know, you only got one mission while you're down there other than resting, which is literally to find us a congregation down there that we can we can affiliate with because with this pan-Hebrewism that's all the way around the world, we need to connect and right. be close to the right. uh, to our people and mm-hmm. whatnot. So, you know, um, I spent quite a few hours listening to some of the uh, some of the content that you put out. Mm-hmm. on uh, YouTube. And I just want to kind of give the people, a, a, give you an opportunity to introduce yourself to the people, introduce yourself, and then tell them where they can find you on social media so they can find out um, the content that you're putting out. Um, mm-hmm. Trey is one of, a cornerstone here at oh, FTF. I appreciate it. And <laughs> um, very much uh, well-versed in, in Torah, in the Masoretic Texts, um, one of the things that you will, if you ever meet Trey, and I'm looking at one of these cameras, <laughs> if you ever get a chance to meet him, you will know that he is just not a carrier of a sword. He actually will use that thing on you. He's, <laughs> he's you know, you're like uh, uh, King Leonidas when he's out there wrestling with his son and whatnot, and he's uh, teaching him how to use use all the tools and tricks of the trade. That's, that's that book over there. You've got so many different things in there that, that make the most highest word to you, very valuable and an asset. So what, go ahead and introduce yourself, tell them where they can find you out, and then kind of tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll jump right into some of the things that we want to maybe talk about okay. here on the uh, podcast. Yeah, no problem. Real quickly, uh, my name is Trey Beverly. Um, I was invited here from a, a co-worker at, um, at my old job about... Uh-huh. Oof, Five, maybe six years ago. Six years ago, somewhere okay. Somewhere around that, yeah. Uh-huh. And um, so, yeah, I found out the, the difference between the Torah and the, and the New Testament, and uh, I've been interested, talked to Rabbi, and um, the truth of the word just resonated with my spirit. So mm-hmm. I've been here, and I've been studying since. Um, my YouTube, I have a YouTube channel, which is YHWH dot H E A L S 11. That's Yahweh Hills 11. Mm-hmm. And I have four videos on there so far. Um, I have uh, clarification on who the Most High calls it, who he calls his son. I have a video on there of clarification of the difference between our covenant, which some people call the Old Testament, uh, and the difference between the, the New Testament, which is not Hebraic. And I also have a video on there where I show, again, the difference between our covenant with the New Testament of how J.C. contradicts the foundation, which he is so-called supposed to represent. 
you see, that's cool. You know, I don't actually want to come back to those, those, those topics, but I actually want to take a sidebar real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, matter of fact, I didn't mean to cut you off. Do you have any other social media that people can find you on so they can, they can follow you? Uh, yeah, I have a TikTok that is called Tree, Tree of Yah. Okay. Let's see it. Yeah, it's called uh, T-R-E-E, Tree mm-hmm. of Yah, Y-A-H-11. So I have uh, videos up there of uh, a lot of the posting that you guys have from um, from the podcast and congregation pieces. So if people would like, they can also go there and get some valuable information. Yeah, because you know what? I mean, as we continue on in the way of the Most High, we finding it's very rare, this remnant right. that's out there. You know, right. you usually are going to find individuals that are 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 still dabbling on one side of the fence, kind of yeah. even almost straddling both sides of the fence. And what I mean by both sides of the fence is, you know, they're, they're over in Christianity. They still have this strong pull to be over there. And we're going to talk about that in a, right, in a right, little right, bit right. of a second. Right. And then they are trying to embrace the Hebraicness of who they are to understand that the Masoretic text is talking about them, um, that right. they're a part of a community, a part of a, a, a nation of people that the Most High chastens mm-hmm. and loves and it's kind of difficult for them to kind of literally get rid of all of the minutia that yes. they've been hearing since the time that they've been reared in the church. Right. And they've got questions and different types of things. So um, mm-hmm. it's interesting. Well, I just definitely want to make mm-hmm. sure that everybody gets your information so they can reach out and we can get the most highs word out to the people. Now, right. when I was watching your video, mm-hmm. um, you mentioned... You also go by another name on your videos, which oh, yes. I talked about yeah. this guy. I thought it was ironic when I watched it. I uh-huh. said, he said, you're shy. Yes. And that's how you, this is how you introduce yourself on, yeah. on your YouTube videos. And you're shy is also, in if you read the book of 1 Samuel, uh-huh. you're shy is Melech David's father's name. Right. Which, right. if you translate that in English, it's going to come out as Jesse. Yes. But yes. Mm-hmm. What's the reason for your shy? Why 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 did you decide to go uh, that out? Well, that's actually my first name. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. You've been calling me my middle name this whole, you know. This whole entire time. time. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's my first name. Oh, why? Yeah. So the things that you find out when you show up on the podcast. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. I was wondering about that. I was like, why is he using it? Name is shy uh-huh. for some odd reason. Okay. Yeah. So as far as the, the, the content that you have on there, and you first started that channel, and yes. I think the content that you have on there is excellent. Um, it's that. sound. Um, you do one of the things that I think is germane. I use that word a lot. I need to stop using that word no. germane. Germane, 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 germane. <laughs> one of the things that we use, we do here a lot in our um, explanation at mm-hmm. FTF is mm-hmm. if you're going to make a statement, mm-hmm. you got to back it up. Right. With something that's either in the Masoretic text or something that's historically or scientifically sound, they all kind of are symbiotic and they relate to each other yes. um, um, in a certain way that makes things complete. Any particular reason why you decided those particular topics, one being who's the real son oh, yeah. of Hebrew Israel, uh, of the Ibir? And again, when I use the term Ibir, I'm talking about. Eber, our mm-hmm. ancestor upon which the word translates in English to Hebrew when you use the word Eber. Mm-hmm. And then you also have um, content on there about uh, covenant text versus uh, man's text, which yes. I thought was a very good uh, dissertation that you did there and some other things. Why those particular topics? And is, uh, is that something that you're seeing outside of these four walls where people are very um, uh, question? Well, they're questioning that? Yes, um... I chose those topics because I felt like those were, uh, what should I say, hot topics Mm -hmm. to let people see the difference between uh, the covenant and the New Testament. Mm -hmm. You know, so many of us have grown up thinking that, you know, this man named Jesus Christ was the Most High's uh, only son. Mm -hmm. And... When you come to Torah and then you realize and you see that the Most High is only calling the nation of Israel his first son. You can go to, you know, one of the examples is Exodus uh, chapter 4, verse 22. Matter of fact, I got that up on the board. Let's go, you, let's go right mm-hmm. there. 
so the people can see that. Right. All right. Got it right here. Even, right in, even in 22, right there. It says, yeah, then you are to tell Pharaoh, mm -hmm. Yahweh says, Yisrael is my firstborn son. Mm -hmm. I have told you to let my son go in order to worship me, but you have refused to let him go. Well, then I will kill your firstborn son. So uh, I, I think that is uh, resonate with people's uh, spirit. Um, highly, I know it resonated with mine. You know, mm -hmm. once I once I understood that, hey, the Most High is acknowledged me as you know a son too. You know, mm -hmm. you can look at our shepherds or our prophets. You know, like role models and big brothers, but he's looking at us as all his sons and daughters. Right. So that is definitely a subject that I wanted to to address to to the audience. And also that goes in line with, you know, we're not supposed to worship anybody besides the Most High. Yeah, that's very true. Yes. The text talks about that very adamantly. That, yes. that matter of fact, you quote it in one of your, um, your dissertations about, um, I think it's in, uh, what, Devarim chapter number 6, verse 4, where it yes. says, uh, Shema, I'm going to say it in, uh, mm -hmm. in, in uh, Hebrew, which is Shema Israel, um, Eye Asher Eye. Is one. Is one. Akkad. Is a cod. A cod, yes. So um, he's one. There is is no other yeah. that we're supposed to. No trinity. Yeah, there's no <laughs> trinity. There's yeah. no acknowledgement of anyone else. It's just the most high. And that's how he had ordained it yes. for us for us to be. So it's interesting that you picked that subject matter to talk about. You, you don't have a problem with me asking how old you are, do you? No, that's fine. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm 30. Okay, so you're yes. 30. Yes. So. Amongst your peer group, not uh -huh. to say that I'm old because I'm not. You're definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't do a lot of talking on social media and whatnot, mm -hmm. um, other than what the stuff that we publish and we put out. So I don't interact um, with a lot of people in that on that particular front. Is that something that you know that issue of um, firstborn son to just kind of eradicate, or are you just trying to get people to think about saying, "Hey, listen, you know, it does say this in the text. How do you deal with that?" Well, uh, I, I, I see that, um, like, I was talking to a young man uh, a few days ago, mm -hmm. and he was dropping off an Amazon package, and I was just, you know, telling him, asked him how he was, and he was telling me that he was good. And, you know, I told him, I said, I'm good. I'm just, you know, trying to let the most high guide me. Mm -hmm. And then we uh, enter, uh, let him know that, you know, I was a Hebrew Israelite, mm -hmm. you know, but I also let him know that, you know, I'm not a racist Hebrew Israelite because oh, the Torah okay. teaches it's about basically a war between good and evil. Correct. Those who want to apply the most high's ways and those who don't want to apply the most high's ways. Bloodline is just not going to get you in a safe zone. You right. have to put in work. And so, and I also let him know that in text that the most high calls the nation as we just spoke about mm -hmm. his son and like his his eyes kind of like blink, you know what I mean? He was just like, he was just like, wow, you know what I mean? Because, mm -hmm. you know, here at FTF, you know, we've been around this information so long mm -hmm. that some of these people who have nowhere started to try to learn what we're learning, sometimes we don't realize how powerful these little points are that we know are to people who do not know that information. Oh, yeah. No, I, yeah. I, yeah, I mm -hmm. agree with you totally. Yeah. Um, I think I might have mentioned on a previous podcast mm -hmm. that there was, um, yet to be released, um, I was watching YouTube uh -huh. and there was a panel of pastors on stage and those panel of pastors were answering questions from the demographic and the constituency that was out in the audience. And as they were emailing their questions in, they were asking some of the most remedial 101 uh -huh. questions. And I'm thinking to myself, as much as you guys talk about all the intricacies and little idiosyncrasies that are in text, people still have general questions that they needed to have answered. Yes. And one of them was about the Shabbat. It was like, uh -huh. literally, you're telling us, Pastor this is just John Doe, right. that we're supposed to be following the Ten Commandments. And one of the Ten Commandments is worshiping on the Shabbat. How come we don't worship on the Shabbat? And the answer mm. the guy gave him was, well, 
The most high, well, he didn't even say the most high. He said, God has a day for a rest. Mm -hmm. And we choose to make it. (laughs) We choose? Yeah. We choose to make it on Sunday. So as long as you're observing a day of rest, Mm -hmm. then you have, Mm -hmm. you're within compliance of the text. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying to myself, nor, number one, that's totally wrong. Totally wrong. First off. Second of, second of all, um, <laughs> you didn't really answer the question at the end of the day right. because the root and foundational issue, which is getting back to kind of what your point is, I think right. with trying to explain who the son, the most high son is, yes. is that we have these contradictory yes. item or at least ideologies mm-hmm. within this text. Mm-hmm. And I need someone to reconcile it for me because I've got one set of a codex saying one thing mm-hmm. and then I've got the Masoretic text saying something else. Now I may had mentioned two terms there already that are not even getting used. Mm-hmm. One, the Greek codex mm-hmm. and two, the Masoretic text, which mm-hmm. in Christianity they don't use at mm-hmm. all. Right. So it's, it's, right. it's interesting in that sense that even at a foundational level, if you miss just the foundational piece, mm-hmm. then all the rest of the stuff that comes out of it really just mushrooms and blooms into something, into just, just misinformation that you're just trying to put a Band-Aid over to fix. Right. They, they treat uh, the Masoretic text like it's for information only. Right. So, I for mean... Them, if, for them to play with or whatever and do what, they, what their motive wants to use and pick off of the, um, the covenant. Yes. I, Absolutely. I would rather them use a Dr. Seuss book on, <laughs> right. on, on Sunday morning <laughs> than, to, than to quote the text. And because really it. what you're yes. doing is you're blaspheming right. what's, what's there. Ooh. I mean, you can go ahead and, right. and let me give you an example of springboarding because this is what mm-hmm. they do all the time. Mm-hmm. Let me give you an example. Mm-hmm. Now, I got two people in the back. They're going to help me out too. Okay. All right. <laughs> Where did this come from? Sam, I am. Okay. I do not like green eggs and ham. Uh-huh. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. Right. I do not like green eggs and ham. Now, somebody could sit there and say, okay, well, that's got to be a Hebraic brother right there because he don't like eggs and he don't like ham. Right. But after the being pressured and pressured and pressured all this time by some Christian person, now he's over there saying, no, nah, I like them at the end of the day. Now I'm being indoctrinated into a way that's contradictory to what I'm used to seeing. Right. I, I use that example right. to say, you could, if you're going to springboard off of the text, right. you can use anything to do it. Mm-hmm. The best thing for you to do is stay within the context Mm-hmm. and confines of the Masoretic text yeah. in its proper context mm-hmm. where it brings us back full circle to where you're pointing out here in, uh, uh, in the text here in Shemot, chapter number four, verses 20, 22 through 23, which specifically state mm-hmm. who the Most High Son is. We're not springboarding. Yeah. We're not trying to make it something that it's not. Mm-hmm. We're taking the Most High at his word. Yeah. Which leads me into another topic that you had on there. I mean, did you want to did you no, add no, anything? Ahead, no, no, because because I mean, I'll add on. No, I go ahead, go ahead on, because no. that was really robust. What you did mm-hmm. with with explaining that because you had some other app, text in there mm-hmm. that you related to because you went to Hosea. Let's go to Hosea eleven and one. Oh yeah, let you pontificate about Most that for definitely. a little bit while I get there. Okay, so in Hosea eleven, that is another important chapter because. In the beginning, it says, when Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. So so My son. Okay, there it is. So the Most High is calling Israel his son again. Mm -hmm. He says, but the more the prophets called them, the further they went from them. They sacrificed to the Baalim and offered incense to idols. Mm-hmm. And I will also like you know, uh, a good point to point out in here. Mm-hmm. If you go into verse nine, which okay. which we should all know, it says, "For I am Yah, not a human being, the set apart one amongst you." So that that also <laughs> needs to be clarified that the Most High is a spirit. Yeah, he's not a human being. He's not. He created mankind, but he's not mankind. And that's so funny to me because even when I was in the Christian way, mm-hmm. I completely understood the separation between Jesus 
in the most high. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because he even says out there, he says when, when you pray, pray to the Father. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? And I clearly knew that, you know, the most high wasn't coming out of somebody's womb. But... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but it, it, yeah. it does need clarification, though, on, on a serious note. Because some people, and we all know a lot of people actually try to look at JC as he is the most high. Yeah, and it, so, it, it, it's a real interesting piece and, on how, how people look at that. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interject something as a little sidebar that's over there. It's, it's right. almost as if this other religion is geared for the United States and westernized culture. Yes, it is. Because it's literally something where, number one, if we point out the, the, the discrepancies or the dichotomies between the two, number one, we are part of a theocracy. That means that we have, a, we have the most high is basically our king. Right, right. And we do the things that are that have been prescribed in the commandments, the mitzvahs that the Most High asks us to do. Yes. Opposed to, and matter of fact, let's say this: you don't have the opportunity within the Most High's word mm-hmm. to go back and say, by democratic vote, we're going to amend this right. and add in extra stuff <laughs> right. to fit how we want to live. Complete violation. Right. So yes. we don't have that opportunity. So it's kind of this weird thing where on Sunday mornings, people want to act like they're a part of a kingdom, mm-hmm. but then as soon as they leave, they know that, as a matter of fact, while they're sitting in there, they know that they're a part of a democracy the whole entire time because yes. they know that they control that pastor that's up there because literally if that pastor says something that they don't like, they'll up and leave or they'll make a change and get rid of him. Mm-hmm. So we don't have the ability to overthrow the Most High. Yes. We don't have a, a, the ability to, um, uh, to circumvent the yes. text the way it is. And, and really, JC or Jesus Christ or Yeshua or whatever you want to call him yeah. is very convenient because now you have this basically scapegoat to put all of your problems on, all of, right. your, all of your failures as a person to say, you know what? I'm forgiven because... I literally believe in this particular person. And that's, that's, that's just so crazy because we all know that when we study the word, we see that the most high doesn't do, quote unquote, it can get more in, in, uh, defined, but he doesn't get a righteous leader or a righteous person in the community and kill them for the sins of the person that is doing sins. The Most High doesn't do that. Right. And another example, if the, if the Most High had operated like that, then why, wouldn't, why didn't that happen to Mashe? Yeah, why wouldn't you he go said, ahead he, and he take him out? Yeah. yeah, he told Mashe, I can give you a whole new people. But if that was his, if he functioned in that way, mm-hmm. then Mashe should have died. Yeah, you had... <laughs> Listen, but he doesn't operate that way. That's right. And if, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. If you look, even look at the caliber, I always, always will say if you put a stat sheet up, if you put like the LeBron up against the, the Michael Jordans of the world and you're comparing stats on paper, you can come up with maybe what you think who is the better person. But I, I can use the same analogy like I'm using J.C. versus Moshe. Right. You look at his stat sheet and all of the stuff that Moshe has brought about. There right. is no Yeshua without Moshe. There is no LeBron without uh, 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 Michael Jordan mm-hmm. leading the paving the way and, and, and making mm-hmm. a path for him. Mm-hmm. So it's, it, it's, it's kind of interesting when you look at it that way, but it, it's, it's go actually dovetails into another topic and I'm mm-hmm. bouncing all over the place because all four of your videos have the same fiber that run through them. Mm-hmm. And you make a statement in, in one of your videos mm-hmm. about um, really drawing this glaring ca- contradiction. And then it had me in, I was at work listening to it and I almost du- was doubled over in laughter mm-hmm. because of the way that you conveyed the information uh-huh. to the audience. Because we were talking about, he was talking about, hey, listen, you know what? Um, the scripture text or the Masoretic text that talks about uh-huh. when you slaughter something uh-huh. and you're supposed to do it kosher, you're supposed to let that blood drain to the ground. <laughs> And you're not supposed to be going ahead and eating. <laughs> We're eating not supposed blood. to consume any blood. Any yes. blood at all. Which, at all. At all. <laughs> so, which was interesting to me because I had always thought of this question, and I know mm. it's probably vulgar and immature, mm. but I'm going to say it because mm. I'm a fool. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> I've well, always wondered when we was in church. Yeah. And I said, and I heard that, 
Yeah. Because we're not supposed to, again, if somebody wants to crucify us about, pardon the pun, crucify us about, okay, you guys are slaughtering animals. Well, you're slaughtering people. Right. You're, you're over there sacrificing, even if it's symbolic. Right. You're over there representing something, saying, I'm going to drink this man's blood uh-huh. and eat this man's flesh. And that brings me to my point that I was yes. going to bring up that I was kind of immature. Yes. Drinking the blood, symbolizing it, I, I get. Mm. But eating, actually, I don't get that, but eating somebody. Right. Who, who gets, what part of you are you eating? That's what I wanted to ask these Christians all the time. When you eat Christ, what part of him are you eating? Are you eating his elbows? Are you eating his fat? Mm-hmm. Who's the unlucky lucky person that gets to eat the gluteus maximus? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Your text says, right. 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 Well, only if you eat my flesh right. and Which drink my flesh. They never specify what part of the flesh you're eating. It, 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 <laughs> but it's, it's one so of those funny. things where you say, okay, this is kind of ridiculous because when you look at it through, through the, the lens of the text, and I think you actually make, matter of fact, you got some good points in here that I wrote down. I had to take notes on you. Matter of fact, oh, Devarim 12 and 23. Let's go get that okay, one. Okay, yeah, let's go there. These are all good talking points, and the reason why I'm bringing these up, and I thought it was just a good, a good platform for you and to be able to talk about these things because uh, getting back to my analogy, well, not my, my example that I was um, bringing up about uh, the individuals that were on stage. There's a lot of things that we talk about here in FTF that are, that are really detailed. Mm-hmm. And sometimes um, we just need to get back to some of the basic things that people are, are looking for to get answers on. And these oh, are some yes. of the things that they need answers on. It's like, yes, why do I have yeah. to eat somebody's flesh and drink somebody's blood or do something to, sim- not physically do that, but symbolize something yeah. like that? And how does that relate to anything else germane to what we're supposed to do. But here in 23, um, it says, it says, mm-hmm. just take care, care. Yeah. not to eat. eat the blood. Matter of fact, let's go back up. We're going to read these myths, folks, from the Most High. Let's go to 22. It says, eat it as you would eat a gazelle, a gazelle or, deer. or deer. The unclean and clean alike may eat it. Just take care not to to eat the, the blood. blood for the blood is in the life and you are not to eat the life with, with the, the meat. meat don't eat it pour, pour it, it out on the, on the ground like water like water don't eat it right. so that things it's will go clear. well with you and your children after you very clear as you do what eye asher eye sees as right, right. so Mm-hmm. Gosh, I want to bring up a point right here. I'm going to have Sorry. you pontificate about yeah. that for a little bit. I'm going to shut up for a little bit. Oh, it's all good. I love this word right here. I love this whole entire phrase. Oh, yes. What eye asher eye sees as right. And I've come across so many, and tell me if, if this you come across these people too. Uh-huh. We see the mitzvot that's there that tells us not to eat blood. Right. Not even to symbolize anything that's close to eating blood or drinking blood. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. And then it ends with this piece right here. It says that is right in the eyes or seen by as right in the eyes of the Most High. Mm-hmm. Too many people I run across mm-hmm. this day and age mm-hmm. have this one catchphrase. Well, that's my truth. That's what's right to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know if you run across that a lot, but I'm clapped back so far, so yeah. fast, and I'm like, listen, I'm not concerned about your truth. I'm exactly. concerned about another word that you can put in front of that word truth called the truth. Yeah, not the truth. your truth. From the most high, yes. Yeah, the truth. Right. There are certain things that are just truths that are backed up in the Masoretic text that we live by that govern our behavior, mm-hmm. that govern our leadership, mm-hmm. that govern the kingdom. Mm-hmm. And when we start making things, and we're going to see this as we... As we them, yes. Yeah, yes. We're, as we get into the apocryphal books, you're going to see one p- in p- character in, part, in particular mm. that puts himself up on a pedestal and 
makes his own commandments. I'm talking about King Nebuchadnezzar. Okay. Um, and he's exuding this right here. Mm. What's right comes out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't know. If, have you run across folks that just, this is my truth. This is my truth. This is, this is what's right to me. Well, yeah. Uh, and I tell them that, you know, uh, well, how are you a servant? If you're making your own set of rules, because the most high, he tells us clearly if if a person believes in scripture, because we all know Mm -hmm. if someone doesn't believe scripture, then we don't have nothing really to debate with you about. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to apply the most high's word and his ways and you clearly see what it says, but you choose to do something else, then it's like. You're you're not you know what I mean you're you're not right. you're not really dedicated you know what I mean you're you're doing again you're picking and choosing and um, again when it comes to this whole eating blood thing you know some people like you said they say oh well, that was a metaphor okay but why would he why like I said mm. in the video why would the highest representation of the Most High use something that is unclean mm-hmm. to try to get unclean people clean? That that wouldn't make any sense. And that's what when you study in it, like I have a video on there where I'm going over uh, Matthew chapter five. Right. And where uh, Yeshua has contradictions where uh, where uh, mind if I read something? No, go ahead. By by all means, (laughs) by all means. So if we go into Matthew chapter five and we start at verse 17. 17. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, we got we got to start there. He's that's famous. We got to start there. Matthew five and seventeen. Yes, we got to start there. He's he, this is a contradict. This whole entire piece is a contradiction right here. Mm-hmm. Five and seventeen. Go ahead. Okay, so he starts off. He says, uh, "Don't think that I have come to abolish the Torah or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to complete." Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed, I tell you that until heaven and earth passes away, not so much as a yod or stroke will pass from the Torah. Hold on, hold on for a second. Let, let's stop for a second, because this is what yeah. our teacher would do to me if he was sitting right here and said, let's explain that word Torah real quick, because mm-hmm. most people are going to look at that and say, don't think that I've come to, a, going all the way back to the top of the 17, mm-hmm. it says, don't think that I have come to abolish mm-hmm. the Torah Mm-hmm. Or the prophets. We know who the prophets are, or in, in as we are Ibir, we use the word seers. Right. Torah. Let's explain what that is. Torah, and we've done it before on this podcast. Torah is not the first five books of the Masoretic text that were written right. by Moshe. Torah is the mitzvot right. that are inside, inside the first five books. Yes. If you want to call it the Torah. I don't necessarily prescribe to that because it intermingles two different things that confuse people. Mm. I didn't I didn't come to get rid of In other words, let me read it a different way. It says, if I read it the way people look at it, it says, don't think that I have come to abolish the first five books of the Masoretic text or the prophets. Mm-hmm. It's not what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. It says, when he says, don't think that I've come to abolish the Torah, he's talking about the mitzvot. Yeah, so if I was to read that different said, yeah, yeah I, not the culture. Yeah. I, I didn't come to abolish the mitzvot or the commandments of the Most High. So I apologize for, for jumping in there, but you stopped where it says a stroke will pass from, no, uh, not so much as a yod or a stroke will pass from the Torah. Yeah, and then uh, it says not until everything that must happen has happened. So you can clearly see this is out of Yeshua's mouth that he's claiming that he's completely um, with the Torah. Mm-hmm. In an alliance and in agreement with the Torah, and we stand with him on that one. He's, yeah. he's on good ground but, here. But in this in this same chapter, a few times, and I can share one of them. <laughs> but a few times where he states that I know the Most High says, mm-hmm. but I say. And hold on, well, I, I thought you only said the words that your father tells you. That's correct. So, um, a, a example that I want to get uh, sure. for the people in here mm-hmm. is in Matthew uh, chapter five. If you go to uh, verse thirty-one, now, let, let, let's let, let's roll right into thirty-one here because as he's okay. as he's here uh-huh. in seventeen, yeah. he's, he makes this declaration, which is good, saying that everything that has happened must happen, okay. and this is actually if you read this part right here. Uh-huh. And you go to the book, apocryphal book of Baruch. Mm-hmm. 
the second book of Baruch, this comes to life mm. on all the things that have to happen before the end of the Aharit Ahamin, which is the end of day. So he goes on and talks about, this is the part that I don't want to skip over. This is some meat right yeah, here, yeah, yeah, yeah. where it says, so whoever disobeys the least of these mitzvot, mm. remember how I said earlier, I said Torah is the mitzvot? Mm -hmm. That's what he's talking about. Right. The least of these mitzvot and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys them, first of all, we got a, we got a problem. Right out of, yeah, we right out of the gate. We do. We do. This is where he starts getting <laughs> off, okay? He's good up until the point where he says, anybody that disobeys him or teaches other people we'll to, the against least. the mitzvot will be the least, and the least good. You're good there. This is where you start messing up. When you say, in the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven ain't for you. That's not for you. That's for the heavenly host mm -hmm. and the most high. Mm -hmm. You're not going up there. Mm -hmm. So to give the impression that people are going to heaven, that's not what the Masoretic text talks about. Mm -hmm. So it's subtle. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, oh, okay, I'm going to heaven. That's right. cool. That's not what that's talking about. This is where he gets off. So this right, that statement right there is a contradiction. Mm -hmm. But then he goes on to say, but whoever obeys them and so teaches will be called great. I'm good, but not in the kingdom of heaven. Right. Because you're not going to heaven. Right. There's another, your place is down here. There's the most high melody, this realm for man, not man for this realm. Mm -hmm. For I tell you that unless your righteousness is far greater than that of the Torah teachers or the mitzvot teachers and the perishim, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. So, this is a good point to make because even if you did prescribe to this idea of heaven, you ain't going anyway. Know why? Mm -hmm. Because of that statement <laughs> right here. Whosoever, come on, Cleus, disobeys the least of these misfolks and teaches Others, to do, Others so. to do so will be called least. So anytime somebody gets up there on a Sunday morning telling them you don't have to do any of these things and they've been done away or they're weak and they're ineffective, mm -hmm. is totally wrong. Why you're following them, I don't know. Because your own teacher tells you you shouldn't be listening to that. That mm -hmm. that person is going to be least in your so-called kingdom of heaven. And then this is the funky part about this. When we start in the twenty one. What's this man start doing? He starts naming all the mitz folks. <laughs> so naming what he contradicts. Yeah, <laughs> naming what he's contradicting. <laughs> Don't murder. <laughs> and then he gives you a good. This is like good sound teaching here. Mm -hmm. Throughout here, there's some things that I don't I disagree with in here, but for the most part, it's okay. You jump down to 27. He says, "Don't commit adultery." Yeah. Okay. And, and he keeps going on, and then we jump down to 31, where you were going to get at. Okay. Okay. Oh, yes. So uh, in 31, you, as you can see, it says, it was said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a get. And then it's in bold. And so it tells you right there that you can go to Deuteronomy 24 mm -hmm. to verify in, in, in the Torah, what we would say, what the Most High says about um, whoever divorces his wife must get her a get. And then he says, but I tell you mm -hmm. that in, he, there, he, there he goes with the but. 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 I tell but you. But I tell you. <laughs> hold on. Who are you? <laughs> that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of fornication, makes her an adulteress. And that anyone who marries a divorcee commits adultery. Now. Yeah, that's. So he's, so he's basically saying that if a woman is divorced that anyone who marries that woman after after the uh the first husband mm -hmm. they're committing adultery now when you go to uh deuteronomy 24 okay let's get that so people can see it let's see what the most high says about this yeah, this is because that doesn't add up with what he just said hey, here okay you go. It says here, suppose a man marries a woman and consummates the marriage. 
but later finds her displeasing because he has found her offensive in some respect. He writes her a divorce document. Which Hold on, then that's called a get. get. Yep. That's called a get. Exactly. So I was going to bring that up when you were over there um, in Matthew 5 and 31 when it says um, um, yeah, he can give her a get. A get is a, a divorce, divorce document, document. that um, he issues to his wife. Right. So he issues her a document. Yep. He gives it to her and sends her away from his house. Mm -hmm. She leaves his house. Goes and becomes another man's wife. Oh, see, she can become another man's wife. Right. He said that couldn't be. Mm -hmm. Again, verse three. But the second husband dislikes her and writes her a get, gives it to her and send her away from his house. Or the second husband whom she married dies. In such a case, her first husband who sent her away may, may not, not take her again as his wife mm -hmm. because she is now defiled. It will be a detestable to Yahweh, and you are not to bring about sin in the land Yahweh your El is giving you as your inheritance. So we can clearly see mm -hmm. right here that he just said that he is in complete agreement with the Torah. Right. And now he's changed, trying to change it. Now he's changing his mind. He's saying, hey, listen, this is what... I know what Yahweh said. said but this is what I'm saying. <laughs> but this is what I'm saying. <laughs> I know what it's no, it's just crazy. Let's go back it's to insane. it because yeah. Because he says it was it was said, whoever <laughs> divorces his wife must give her a get. Yeah. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, mm -hmm. which you can, mm -hmm. except on the grounds of fornication. Mm -hmm. That means that he's contradicting what we just read. He can if he is part of the triune trifecta three. Mm -hmm then I think Yeshua, the Holy Spirit, and Yahweh need to go in the room in the back and have a conversation because now you're contradicting yourself because you're saying that if he divorces his wife, except on the grounds of fornication, uh -huh. he can divorce his wife if he doesn't, he finds something unfavorable about her. That's what right. the text says. That's what the scripture says. Yeah. It said it makes her an adulteress. No, it doesn't. No. No. And that anyone who marries a divorcee commits adultery. No, no, so, so, that's not even close to being right. My husband didn't like me, so no one can marry me ever again. Ever again. again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, you know that's complete. That is so funny, and that's why uh, I think I was hearing uh, uh, some people. I think uh, Amish, hmm. where they believe that, and they and they were getting that from. New from, Testament. From the New Testament. Yes, yes, from the New Testament. No, I have never heard that before. Because I, yeah. I heard one of them say, like, they were saying, like, oh, like, when, when we love or get married, we can never love again or mm. remarry again. And so when I read this text, I was like, oh, I think that's where they were getting that misinformation about the Most High's covenant from. Right, right, yes, right. Yes, yes, yes. Right. I mean, it doesn't... Here, here's the other thing. Mm. Is this text, how do I best say this without sounding, <laughs> it, it just appears to me that this text right here, the way that Yeshua is stating this, mm -hmm. is really restrictive mm -hmm. versus say, hey, listen, you know, if I have an issue, then I have uh, grounds to go ahead and I can, I can invoke the mitzvot and I can... I can divorce her as long as I follow the rules and regulations and giving her a get. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is saying it's only for one reason and on one reason alone. And that's because of fornication. Yeah. That's the saying that he had outside marital affairs mm -hmm. and that that is the reason, or she has outside she of, matter of fact, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what's, it's not even directed towards the man. It's directed towards the wife mm -hmm. saying that, on the grounds of fornication. So basically he's saying he cannot divorce her if he doesn't like her, which the Most High said that a man can, can do. He can do that, yeah. He's saying that he can't do that. He can't do that. He's saying it has to be, she has to have some, some entanglements. Yeah. See, the, <laughs> the other thing about this is that if he actually expounded upon that, mm -hmm. he could actually clean this up because there are some instances where there are mitzvot that talk about when... Um, if I'm married to my wife uh -huh. and I suspect that she's, and it's called as having this jealous spirit 
or something that comes over you that says, hey, listen, I think something is up. Right. And what you're supposed to do to follow the proper protocol is you're yep. supposed to go to the Kohanim. She gonna drink he's going to drink. He's supposed to gather the dust off of the floor, mm -hmm. make this concoction with yep. it. She's supposed to drink it. Yep. If her insides bubble up or do whatever, there's a, there's something that's supposed to happen. If it doesn't, yeah. then the, the, what comes out of that is that he can't divorce her at that point. Right. You brought accusations right. against her, right. and you were proven to be wrong. Right. She has to stay your wife. Right. Now, right. Had you elaborated on that mm -hmm. in this text, mm -hmm. maybe I could have acquiesced to it a little bit more, mm -hmm. but it's just so emphatic. But I don't think that's the point we were yeah. trying to make. This is kind of all these little sidebars that are coming out of here, but the main thing I think that you were bringing up is this issue yeah. right here. How dare you go back and say, but, but I, I tell you. And he does this about five times in this chapter. And when you go to uh, uh, what we're, I mean... You can go to, where does it say? To the 33, about breaking the oath, to 38. There it is, 34. Oh, but sorry. I tell you not, he said, oh, I'm a, this let is, me have this Go one. ahead, go get I it. I got to take go this one. Go get it. <laughs> <laughs> I got to take this one. Yeah, go ahead. Please. Oh, I'm getting, so, woo. again, 33, <laughs> you have heard. That our fathers were told. Oh, come yeah, on, now, wait a minute, now, wait a minute. Let's, wait. let's, let's stop. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we were told that. That's good sound teaching. That comes from the goat Moshe through Moshe through uh, the, the Most, Most High. High. Yes. Through Aye Ashe Aye. So, uh, yeah, we've heard it. We're familiar with it. Right. It says, do not break your oath. Right. That's 100%. 100%. And keep your vows to the Most High. He What's even, wrong with that? He even said his name. <laughs> Matter of fact, he should have said, and keep your vows to me, because I am the Most High, but he didn't do that. Right. He says, but... I tell you not to swear at all. Wrong. Wrong. Completely. Complete farce right there. Not by heaven because it's God's throne. I'll use that name that's there. And not by earth because it is his footstool. Isn't there a text that says, I swear by heaven and earth? And there's a reason why you swear that the, the person is swearing by heaven and earth is because heaven and earth don't pass away. Exactly. People pass away. Exactly. Things get destroyed right. on the earth. Right. But as long as the heavens and earth are, those are your two witnesses. Yes. So yes, they are. don't swear by those because he says it's it's because it's it is his footstool and not by Yerushalayim because it is the city of the great king. Did okay. Did you say that? No. <laughs> no, nowhere in there. And don't swear by your head because you can't make a single hair. White or black. Okay, we know that. Right. Basically, you're saying you're not the most high. Yeah, basically. Just let, your, just let your yes be a simple yes and your no be a simple no. Anything more than this has, has its origin in evil. So, okay, wow. let, me, let me just wow. open this you one up. A okay. bomb at the end. <laughs> you just destroy all credibility when you made that statement at the end and said that in verbatim, mm -hmm. Anything more than this is has its origin in evil. First of all, our mitzvot allow us to yes. make oaths. Matter of fact, there is... Woo! We're just mitzvoting it out. See how these mitzvot just coming out? There's a mitzvot that yes. talks about the nazir. Yes. The nazir is an oath yes. that you take that says that I'm not going to take intoxicating drink. Yes. I'm not going to eat the skins of the grape. I'm not going to have anything that comes from the vine. I'm not going to eat the grape itself. I'm not going to have any wine. I'm not going to have any of that. Uh -huh. I'm going to grow my hair long. If I get next to someone who dies uh -huh. and I touch them, uh -huh. then that's when I can cut my hair. Right. Otherwise, you don't cut your hair for any other reason if you happen to mess up. Uh -huh. But it is an oath to the Most High. Yes. You can make yes. those oaths. Yes. So just, and the Most High is okay with that. Right. So yeah. how in the world do you claim to be, let's use their term, God incarnate, and then say anything more than that has its origin in evil. So basically what you just got done saying is the mitzvot are evil because they allow us right. to make O's. Right. Yes, exactly. And I want to go even deeper than that. I sure. would like to ask, how is he truly a Hebrew Israelite? If he doesn't accept the oath and the vow and the covenant of the most. That's, high? Wow, that's a great point. 
Great point. Because this this is what sets us apart. Mm -hmm. And you're saying that if we do that, our origins is an evil and we should not do that? No, because yeah, we, yeah. we, we we take the oath and the vow to live by the Most High's way of life. We're we're, we're his. He looks at us as a wife. Mm -hmm. You know, we have we you celebrate the mitzvah, shavuot, and all these. So this is what sets us apart. And if you're telling us not to do that, well, how are you even a Hebrew Israelite? Yeah, oaths are a true Hebrew Israelite, I should say. Right, and and as you are supposedly God incarnate, you're supposed to know that. Um, <laughs> The issue is, is that uh, <laughs> the establishment of what you were sent here to do, supposedly, right, right. is based on an oath, which you so eloquently put, right. between Avraham and the Most High, is which it? simply says yeah. that you carry the oath in your flesh. You carry the covenant in your flesh of the circumcision. That you says, tore in the flesh. Yeah. That says <laughs> you, are a walk, you are literally a walking contract. Right. So, if you're telling me that we're not honoring O's anymore, then truly, we've gotten to the point where this is so far off in left field. And again, right. our, 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 our mentor and head ambassador and head statesman will continue to keep saying, I'm going to quote him, because he says, they're the nations. They can do whatever, whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. The reason we keep going over there and keep talking about them is because so many of the Ibir are listening to, them. to that message. Yeah. And they need to understand that it is totally contradictory to what the Most High is saying. You can't, all them folks that want to stand up there on, on Sunday morning talking about, uh, 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 I'm blessed in the city, I'm blessed when I come and go, and all that stuff, when they sing that particular song. You ain't blessed for nothing because you know mm -hmm. why? You don't own the, you, have, you take ownership of the contract. Yes. Of yes. the oath that's been made between yeah, Abraham and the sea. That you shouldn't do. Right. So you you can't mm -hmm. be for the mitzvot as you state earlier mm -hmm. in 5 and 17, and then later on just start willy-nilly saying, Yeah, I know what it says. But I but, say But I say we're gonna do something different. That should give you reason for pause already when the Most High talks about I've never changed. He act like he don't know Deuteronomy chapter 13. Well, what's in Deuteronomy chapter 13? Let's show the people. Yeah. These are all good points that we're, that we're trying to make here to, to raise your awareness so you're able to deduce the information for yourself. I had some individuals come in town and stay with us for a little bit, and they are, were deathly, I shouldn't say that, deathly afraid, but they were very apprehensive about the teachings and things that were, that, that were involved with and mm. getting back to the most high. Mm. And it all stemmed down to, I understand it, but I can't speak too loud about it because I'll be excommunicated from my family. I'll be looked at as a heretic. That's a, that's a very deep point. I, 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 I can't fully point. get over here because what is mama going to think? What's daddy going to think? What's my friends going to yes, think? What, what are they going to say? Right. Like now you over there in this thing over here and, and, and you abandoning Christ? I mean, it's the guilt of, which is kind of, kind of comical for us, mm -hmm. but the guilt of no guilt is persecuting them so much that they can't move, which is, mm. which is, which is funny. But yeah. at any rate, 13, you can going to say something. Uh, I cut you off. No, that, that's fine. We, okay. We, we can read it. So let's jump into 13. This is Deuteronomy 13. Mm -hmm. uh, where did you want to go in here? Because this, uh, was, this was good. Right, uh, right there. Right at the, the top. Where okay. he says, uh, everything I am commanding you, you are to take care to do. Do not add to it or subtract from it. This is Yahweh speaking. Correct. And, and let, let's read a little bit more. If okay. a prophet or someone who gets messages while dreaming arises among you and he gives you a sign or wonder and the sign or wonder comes about as he predicted when he said, let's follow other L's which you have not known. Let us serve them. You are not to listen to what that prophet or dreamer says. For Yahweh, your El, is testing you in order to find out whether you really do love Yahweh, your Elohim, 
with all your heart and all your being. <laughs> you are to follow Yahweh your El, fear him and obey his mitch folks. Listen to what he says, serve him and cling to him. And that prophet or dreamer is to be put to death because he urged rebellion against Yahweh, your El, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from a life of slavery in order to subdue you away from the path Yahweh, your El, ordered you to follow. This is how you rid your community of wickedness. So now if we just read up in Matthew, we're, we're not supposed to add or subtract, and he's adding or subtracting. And what we're supposed to do to someone who's adding or subtracting, and then he tells us right here, this is how you rid your community of Very wickedness. Good. So Very those good. who are who, those who are <laughs> nervous, and like you said, they're scared to go tell people, mm -hmm. that confuses me. Mm -hmm. Because if you knew that, if you really love your people to me, Mm -hmm. and you know your people are in a lie, wouldn't it be overwhelming with joy to bring clarity to your people who've been living in a lie? Sure. But instead, we have a whole bunch of people who are scared of that and just rather just not say nothing and plan to backfill. That has me confused. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and it plays a part into our culture and our society that we, uh, that we live in today. This mm -hmm. is a Christian community. This is a Christian society there's a lot of people, I can even go as petty as this and say, you know what, the, the main thing, hot ticket on the, on, on the plate right now is social media. And likes and follows and shares and all that stuff. It's about this public uh, uh, um, substantiation of a person right. yeah, yeah, to, to validate who they are through likes and su subscribers and all this kinds of stuff. And this is not a teaching that is liked or you're going to subscribe to it. Mm. So they're very apprehensive about trying to say, okay, well, this is, this is what the Most High says. I read it. I see it. It makes sense. A, a fool or a child can't err in it. So why <laughs> in the world am I still having these apprehensions about it? That's why I've said yeah. I, I don't understand it either. Yeah. But it, made, it makes it so plain because as yes. you're reading, reading it, I'm thinking about none other than Yeshua himself. Exactly. Because literally as you're reading it, it's saying, you know, Hey, listen, did he not fit all of this criteria that's in did there? Did he not add and did he add not to add it? Did he add and subtract to it? He fulfilled that part of it. So when you talk about you fulfilled the Torah, yes, you fulfilled this part right here. So <laughs> <laughs> and that's about it. Yeah. So let's follow other gods which yeah. you have not known. We have not known no Yeshua. He was never written in the book over here. Never. When you get to these other places, never. unto us a child is given and all this other stuff. That's not talking about no, him. It's not. If you do it in the proper context, mm -hmm. see what else did you say in here? Okay. Matter of fact, the most highest testing you wish he would do from time to time mm -hmm. to see where your heart is. And this is a point that I highlighted right there because that's going to be something that is germane throughout the whole entire yes. text from, from Bittersheet all the way to Chronicles, mm -hmm. which is obeying the mitzvot. That's all the Most High cares about mm -hmm. at the end of the day. But if he comes to you, you should, be put, you should put him to death. There's nothing wrong when they brought that man in front mm -hmm. of the elders mm -hmm. and the ancient ones and mm -hmm. they said, so you are who? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> right. Wait a minute. Right. Wait a minute. Let's go back right. in the tomes and everything. Let's make sure we didn't miss something that we were over there because we didn't see you anywhere. Exactly. Bro, right. At the end of the day. So let's invoke the mitzvot. Mm. We can't kill you. Otherwise, we would. Mm. Since we're under the jurisdiction of Roman law, we have to go to pilot. Okay, yes, underneath Roman law. So yes. we can't, yes. it's just like right. saying, okay, right. somebody does something, right. we can't do anything, not that we would, but right. we can't do anything to them because, we're in... yeah, we can't exactly. take, them out and take them out in the parking lot exactly. back there and stone them to death. No. no. No, we're under the jurisdiction of the United States. Exactly. And so if it was during that time, we'd have took them and said, hey, listen, by our law, this person is not supposed to be existing right now, but <laughs> right. you go ahead and, and you weigh it out. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, they, they decided that the people decided that they wanted a criminal versus this dude. Even the people knew. They was like, listen, crucify him. Put him up there. Give us, give us the, the thief. We'll, right. We can manage him. Right. But whatever's coming out this dude's mouth, I, we don't know right. at the end of the day. So that's right. good. That's good. And, you know, it's, it's right. good to have these kinds of conversations to kind of talk about the things that, that really are the prevalent that are still out there, kind of the... 
the thing that people don't want to talk about. Yes. And I think what you've done so eloquently on your channel mm -hmm. and as you uh, continue to, to meet people mm -hmm. is to draw that distinction mm -hmm. that hopefully you guys understand mm -hmm. that, that the New Testament is a completely different completely book. Different. Completely different. And just different. because yes. they sandwiched it together, yeah. does put, it... Put some similarities and some things you might be familiar with right. to draw you in. Yes. Right. So we have this issue now where on Sunday morning we're gonna, just going to use, other than the creation story mm -hmm. and other some little cute little things in there which they like to quote, oh, what happened to Jonah and being gobbled up by the whale and... The parting of the Red Sea right. and Adam and Eve in, in the in the jungle in the in e in the in the Eden and, and the creation story, mm -hmm. really. And other than other than the um, Proverbs, mm -hmm. which they can pull some good information from, this our text serves them no purpose mm -hmm. because they can't pull any. They have to make stuff up to make it work. So at the end of the day, I love the fact that you're going ahead and. I thought you need a confirmation from me because your confirmation comes from the most high. Oh, man. I, I'm learning from you guys, man. <laughs> you, you and Rabbi have been big role models and, and big brother figures to me. And I, I, I appreciate, you know, all the effort that you guys put into uh, bringing clarity and trying to apply the most high's ways as best as we can. No, no, so I, I, I appreciate I, that. I really honor you guys for that. I appreciate it. And, and the, 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 the funny thing is, is as you're sitting here saying that, you sound no different. From, from me or from, from our head ambassador. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, we're taking the mitzvot, mm -hmm. we're taking the text, and we're applying it in its proper context. And that's literally it. And you, you are able to, to navigate that mm -hmm. really, really well and disseminate the information in a way where people can be receptive to it. And I hope people come out and su support your channel. Appreciate it, man. Awesome, brother. In the way... Of the Most High, Thank of you. the Kingdom, of Eretz, or of the Ibir, mm -hmm. Yeshai, mm -hmm. Trey, yeah, Beverly. That's, that's, me. that's me. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you for spending this time with us. Um, we're going to have you back on the show. I As a matter of fact... That. As good as you talking right now, I may have to give up my seat. Oh, no, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. You, you, you can fill a little room for me in there, but no, we don't need you to go nowhere. <laughs> Very good. So, is there anything you want to close with? Anything you want to say? That uh, I did want to uh, have us read one uh, last part just for the people. Okay, I let's, wanted to, uh, where you want to go? Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 31. Oh, boy. Lamentations. Chapter 3 and 31. Yeah. That brother over there in Lamentations is yeah. sick to his <laughs> stomach about being in exile yeah. and how the Most High's people have just abandoned. And I tell our head ambassador all the time, I said, listen, we ain't got to Lamentations yet. We ain't got to this level yet. As much as we like to think that we are doing something, where did you want to go? Uh, yeah, Lamentations 3 and 31. 3 and 31. I just want to, I'm not going to read all of it. I just want to read a little bit of it. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I just, uh, for the people to know that it says, For rejection by Yahweh does not last forever. He may cause grief, but he will take pity in keeping with the greatness of his grace. And this is very key right here. For he does not arbitrary torment or punish human beings. Mm -hmm. So this is clarification of the people that everything that we're going through is, is needed for us. The Most High is not punishing us for his pleasure. Right. Agreed. When, yes. When anyone tramples underfoot any of the prisoners of the land, when anyone deprives a person of justice and defiance of the Most High, when someone is cheated of justice in court, does Yahweh not take notice of such things? Yes, he does. Exactly. Who can say something and have it happen without Yahweh commanding it? Both good, both don't bad both, things, yeah, don't both bad and good mm -hmm. proceed from the mouth of the Most High. Mm -hmm. Why should anyone alive complain? 
even a strong man about the punishment for his sins. Mm. So. I think that, wow, that was, that's powerful. Because it mm-hmm. really lets you know one thing for me. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and reflect on it, and I'll give, no, give yeah, my no, last thoughts. No, no go ahead. You, you're right there. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, to let the people know that, you know, a lot of us feel that we can't, can't be restored. Mm. You know, a lot of us feel like we've come to a so low place and that we're looking at this journey of cleansing ourselves as too much. Mm-hmm. But the Most High, he, he's, he wants to clean us. Right. You know what I mean? He says it right here. He, he may cause grief, but he would take pity. And mm-hmm. he's not causing harm on us for his pleasure. Mm-hmm. Our people need to know that. Mm-hmm. And also, I love that one right here. When someone is cheated of justice in court, which many of us Hebrew and exiles have been cheated in court. Yeah. <laughs> right. Does Yahweh not take notice of such thing? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. there there will be payback for that. Yeah. Um, let me let me let me expound upon that just mm-hmm. a little bit. Though for those that are of the most high's way, mm-hmm. he takes mm-hmm. pity on them. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. for I mean, this is this is specifically for his his nation of people mm-hmm. um, uh, that it applies to. But I'm going to tell you what I got out of what you read there. That was very interesting. Is it's a personification of a behavioral trait that the Most High has that he personifies throughout text, which is this ability to be in control of everything. Mm-hmm. I often say that life as we live it Mm -hmm. is one giant chessboard Mm -hmm. that the most high is moving specific pieces on this chessboard. He already knows how the game is going to end. Matter of fact, it's even in text where it says that the most high knows the end from the beginning. So there's nothing new that's under the sun for the most high. He knows where everything is going to be moved to. It's just that we're finding out about it in real time about the most high's movement. And so everything that proceeds out of the most, uh, mouth of the Most High is to get you to, because we have this thing as it's called free will, to prod you in the area where he wants you to go. It's mm-hmm. just like a good parent. And I, I'm a parent. Mm-hmm. I don't exact discipline on my children because of just sure enjoyment. Right. That has... Right. I have I take right. no pleasure mm-hmm. in exacting any kind of discipline, mm-hmm. but I know it has to be done in order for the embitterment of the child. Oh, the Most High oh, wants us back in the land. He wants oh, us to have a command over our community, over our relationships that we have with our people. The, the parameters of the of the text give us all the things that we need in order to be successful in the sight of the Most High, not committing to what our own truths are, but committing to the truths of the Most High and living by a higher standard that will make us successful. So with all these things that the Most High has put in our path, we just need to obey what he has and and move forward in that direction. And this text that you're reading here, again, the lamenting prophet or the lamenting seer Mm -hmm. is, is just bringing out that aspect to say, you know what? Doesn't matter if it's good or bad. The Most High is, if he does something, he's doing it to get you back to where he wants you to be. Mm-hmm. He's moving things on this chessboard right. so you can be successful right. and so the community can be successful. And I don't want to necessarily pontificate about uh, the individual because our text is about a community of people. It does get down to the intricacies of an actual individual itself, but globally, it's about his you know, opulent, omniscient, well, opulent group of folks Mm -hmm. that he set aside to represent him. Exactly. You don't want, you want people in the position of leadership as we're even going through with with Melech Shaul that represent the Most High in his totality Mm -hmm. and his behavior and how, how, what his personification of, of himself is. In the Eret. So I, I think it's beautiful. It's what, what you brought up. It's been a I love it's been a it's been awesome to take a look at these texts with you and 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 Thank expose you. them and go line by line and and expose some things that are dichotomies within the text. Um, and when I say dichotomies in the text, I mean New Testament versus uh, the Masoretic text that brought, right. provide clarity. So right. I appreciate you, man. I, I really I do. You. you got a mind on you that just is 
accepts the Most High and his mitzvot, and I can't thank the Most High enough for your commitment and your devotion and all the things. And, and again, it's not to FTF. I'm going to keep saying that till I'm blue in the face. <laughs> Trey is not committed to FTF. <laughs> Trey is committed to the mitzvot mm -hmm. and to the Most High. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, you've aligned yourself with people that are like mine, like myself, that are committed to the Most High and the perpetuation of his people. So with that being said, this has been Sean Appleton and Trey Beverly. And this has been Hebrews, Hebrews in and Exile. Exile. Shalom. Shalom.